Quilty is brought to you by APQS, handcrafted quilting machines. Baby Lock, for the love of sewing. Hovel, when you need to cut it close, choose Hovels. Quiltology, the urban quilt space. Quilty. We're here in the Chicago set, on the Chicago set again. Here at your apartment. Here at my apartment. <laughs> I love being here. <laughs> thanks, yeah. thanks. It's, I hope it's clean enough. Yeah. Uh, we, I, we talked about hand quilting in the first part of this two-part quilty episode uh, series, and now we're going to talk about machine quilting. You were saying how, you know, times have changed. Oh, even yes. from when you, when you were quilting in the beginning. Oh, absolutely. When I started quilting, it took a long time. This was before rotary cutting, you know, in the late 70s. And it took a long time to make a quilt top. Mm -hmm. I mean, we cut patchwork pieces out one at a time. Mm -hmm. And so it was really, you know, there were no fast methods. Mm -hmm. And so really, the amount of time it took to hand quilt a quilt was not that different from the time it took to even machine piece a quilt because of the cutting. The cutting See, was so time consuming. You were still using a machine to piece, but Absolutely. you were cutting by hand and, mm -hmm. and everything. So yeah, but then... Then, and the rotary cutter comes along in the 1980s, and I think quilters all over America have their quilt tops piling up, and they're like, I'm not going to live long enough. They were piling up as high as their shoulder pads. Yeah, they were. And the so 80s, I, you know. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I haven't done any history on this, and I don't know if anybody has. But I think that people just got creative, and they're like, i got to figure out a way to quilt this quilt on my sewing machine so I can get these quilts finished and make more quilt tops. Great. And so over the years, some brilliant quilters have developed wonderful ways just on your home sewing machine mm -hmm. to finish quilts by machine quilting. And it doesn't mean it's any less <coughs> legitimate than hand quilting. It's it's just faster. And we talked about that in the first episode, so you can watch and hear right. a little bit more about that theory. But you've prepared, or uh, we're going to show sort of how you've prepared this right. uh, small quilt block for machine quilting. Because they're just like you prepare a hand quilting, um, a quilt for hand quilting, you prepare a quilt for machine quilting too. It's just a little bit different. Right. And, and it, it, you're getting the same, uh, it's to get you to the same place where your layers are closely held together right. so that they don't shift when you're quilting. Right. Now this is, a, we borrowed this quilt block so that everybody can see in, this, in our like miniature set here mm -hmm. uh, how this works. And, but you do the same thing if it was a crib quilt or if it was any, a bigger quilt. Uh, just a word to the wise, handling a big quilt under a home sewing machine, it, you, know, you want to start with something small. It's more challenging. Yeah. You gotta you gotta handle a lot Physically. of fabric and a lot of material. Physically. Right. So so what you've done, just like in, in the hand quilting uh, demo that we did, you put your backing fabric down mm -hmm. first. It's pre bigger. Pretty side, pretty side down. Mm -hmm. uh, then your batting goes in, mm -hmm. and then on the top is your your pieced top. And uh, for a pe for a quilt this small, a little a little block that we're doing here, you've like got for about a table a, runner, a table right. decoration. You got about an inch of batting extra on the sides, on every side about an inch. Uh, and then about a, a width of an inch bigger for your backing fabric too. The bigger quilt, get a little bit extra, right. up to three inches even on oh, each yeah. side. On each side because, mm -hmm. you know, you don't want, we can see this whole thing and control it, but you don't want your quilt top shifting and then you machine quilt and you get down there, you might say things you really shouldn't say mm -hmm. when you realize that you your batting has slipped under your back mm -hmm. and you don't have you I had to do that one time I had to actually piece a piece of fabric and batting in there so I don't want that good planning is, is a good idea to what's hold, a great thing to do is to when you have a bigger quilt is go to the library or community center or somewhere when you have a table at standing height mm -hmm. that you can do this prep work nice yeah yeah that's good so to hold these layers together instead of basting like with a stitch like you do for hand quilting you use safety pins and the safety pins that you can use are um, straight pins, just, just like ordinary that. Pins. Ordinary straight uh, safety pins. Quality, quality, high quality pins. High quality pins. Or you can get these kind of specialty pins that are bent, and they're they're for this job. You get them uh, at the at the quilt shop. At the quilt shop, and they mm -hmm. help you return. Actually, this is not that hard. Mm -hmm. But if you're putting like 200 pins into a big quilt, your fingers get so sore, and yeah. that's what the purpose of this. And and also a great thing to have is a little. You got a grapefruit spoon yeah. in your uh, kitchen drawer. It has a little serrated edge. Some quilter thought my fingers are getting sore. I need help, and so she thought I'm going to try a grapefruit spoon. So these pins just go in, and as they come out. They, you just slide that tip of that pin mm -hmm. into that grapefruit spoon uh, groove, and it helps you get the pin closed. Close the pen. Yep. Quilters the are brilliant. There we go. Brilliant. brilliant. They're brilliant. And, and the you, tape holds it taut. And you said, yeah, you tape it down to the floor of the table so it'll hold it taut. And you said you pin about uh, a fist width distance apart. So actually, you know, we just pinned that in. But you don't really need that one right. because as long as you've got about a fist exactly. in between each pin, 
you're cool. It's a way to check it. And we'd mm -hmm. crawl around the floor and check and make sure that we had it adequately done. So then you've got it pin basted and it's ready to take to the machine, right? right. So you'd untape, and I just use painter's tape because it doesn't uh, uh, shred the fabric because it's not very uh, sticky. Great. But before you do go to the sewing machine, and there's some things to do to prepare over there, but you want to kind of think about where the quilting is going to go. We're talking about the most basic kind of machine quilting, which is with the walking foot. Mm -hmm. The walking foot is is usually sold separately from your machine, and it helps uh, guide along with the feed dogs. It helps guide your fabric, your your sandwich. It feeds it evenly through, so the right. top and the bottom go through the machine at the same speed. Right. So we're going to put that on our machine, and let's go over there now and do a stitch. Okay. All right, so we've got our walking foot on our machine. That was pretty easy to do. If you need help, check your manual out or have somebody help you. Uh, and that's on, and our thread, we've got our right. thread. Um, we, we thread the machine with thread that is specifically designed for machine quilting. Mm -hmm. And I got a little red spool. What do I do with it? Here it is. Um, this is a, a thicker, it's designed for machine quilting, just like hand quilting thread is designed for hand quilting. And so we use special thread. It'll say right on the spool, machine quilting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We've also set our machine so the needle will stop down, mm -hmm. right? Great. And the next thing is to sew a test. Yep, sew so, so your test, and uh, I think if you do any machine quilting, you should just always have a little sandwich that's just a scrap sandwich that you can practice your stitch on. Make sure it's looking good. Uh, make use sure the same batting that you're going to use in your project so that it's a true test. Mm -hmm. And just have this hanging around so you can practice a little bit before you start on your project. On your real project. Mm -hmm. So here's our little block. Uh, for this, there's no, we're going to do, do any fancy quilting. We're just using our walking foot. We're not getting into anything more advanced than that. Uh, I'm going to just stitch in the ditch. What that means is the seam allowances have been pressed one way. So that means this area, the low side of the seams, mm -hmm. is not as thick. And so the needle can, whether you're hand quilting or machine quilting, it's easier for the needle to go through. Cool. So I'm just going to bring it over here and line it up so that I can watch as my needle goes along that little edge. Great. Mm -hmm. So I'm just guiding, I'm just feeding this through so that the needle goes right along that ditch area uh, of my patchwork. And I would just stitch all the way across to the end mm -hmm. and then go the other ways and just kind of probably make a, a giant plus of machine quilting. And that would be enough to hold it together for your quilt. And that's why you do the needle stop down because then you can pivot with your needle down. You know, you can pivot your project as you, as you machine quilt. So get yourself a walking foot, practice some machine quilting. It's really fun. Um, start on a small project and then maybe you work your way up. And uh, thanks for joining us, Mom. It was a lot of fun today. See you later. Quilty is brought to you by APQS, handcrafted quilting machines. Baby lock for the love of sewing. Hovel, when you need to cut it close, choose Hovels. Quiltology, the urban quilt space.